Hello and welcome to Autodesk's latest webinar with Car Design News. My name is Owen Reedy and I'm the editor of CDN. This webinar will focus on the developments in Ailey's 2014. Over the next half an hour or so, we'll be joined by Autodesk's Robin Aldroyd, who will show us the latest updates to Autodesk Ailey's 2014 and how they can help your team improve their workflows. He'll demonstrate how this latest release is focused on getting new users on board and enhancing the productivity of existing users. And this applies across the whole spectrum of users, whether it be designers experimenting with ideas, modelers refining designs, class A surfaces delivering efficient control data, or visualization experts delivering stunning renders. Robin has worked for Autodesk since 2006. During his career, he's had a strong focus on industrial design and visualization. And he also has a depth of knowledge with solutions for creative design in automotive, transportation, and consumer products. He's also currently a member of Autodesk Design, Lifestyle, and Simulation Group, which focuses on supporting creative design customers and partners within Northern Europe and larger customers worldwide. As we, go through the question, as we go through the presentation, you'll no doubt have some questions for Robin. You'll answer these at the end of his presentation, but you can submit these at any time by typing them into the box at the bottom right hand side of your screen. But also, if you experience any technical issues during the, se during the session, please let us know by typing in the same box, and we'll do our best to resolve them. It's now time to hand over to Robin, so you can begin with what I'm sure will be a fascinating presentation. Over to you, Robin. Thanks, Owen. So uh, thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, listening to this presentation about um, Alias 2014. Um, as you may know, um, Alias 2014 has been out for a few months, so hopefully most of you have seen and heard about um, the, some of the new things, but hopefully I can enlighten you about some other things as well. So let's get straight into it. Um, really wanted to just start with the product family and just describe what's happened with the product family and where we are. Um, really, I suppose, no change from 2013. Um, the product family family has the same focus. We've got alias design, alias surface, and alias automotive. Um, focused, as you can see below, on um, these specific tasks. So alias design is for the industrial and product design user um, doing the creative process. Alias surface is about production modeling and class A modeling. And Alias Automotive is the complete automotive styling solution from sketch through to technical surfacing in Class A, um, including visualization. If we look then at you know, what's included with those products um, in a high-level overview, uh, Alias Design, you don't just get Alias Design, you also get Sketchbook Pro and Sketchbook Designer. And with Alias Surface, you just have Alias Surface. Alias Automotive is you know, the complete solution, so it has all the tools and capability, including Sketchbook Pro, Sketchbook Designer, and it also includes Maya for your concept modeling workflows, um, freeform organic workflows with uh, polygonal data, and for your render preparation and um, your render generation. Uh, so, if we're, um, we carry on and look at the different themes, so the different themes for the actual 214 release um, were customer satisfaction and ease of use, productivity, and this is just not on one specific area, but um, these four areas, if you can see, and workflows. So every release, we try and adopt um, a number of themes um, to give the product um, a direction and also you know, follow what customers are actually ask asking for. So one that we've been following for a number of releases is customer satisfaction and ease of use. We've been trying to improve um, on the workflows that we have, make small refinements, but these are often those small refinements that save you a lot of time in your daily work. Um, we want to bring consistency. So you know we've been trying to make the tools consistent, the way they work and operate, um, the way they look and feel. And so we've progressed and continued with that um, operation going forward. Productivity, we don't just productivity for as previous releases for you know just the class A and the modeling teams. This release is focused on productivity for really for everybody because there's tools that are, really can be reused by many different teams. So we can automate and simplify repetitive tasks, you know, we can enable creativity with some of the tools as well. 
um, some of the new tools for doing dealing with arrays allow, allow us to try different things out and actually in some ways help the creativity. But we still need to continue to invest in the modeling and class A workflows to make sure that um, our broad user base can do all the things they need to do but also that we refine those as we go forward. When it comes to the workflows and, and transitions between different tool, tools and products, you know, Autodesk talks a, a lot about digital prototyping and a process of reusing the data throughout. So Alias um, is focused on this as well. We want to improve the data flow from within our products and to some of the other products that you use in your daily life. So we want to remove those barriers and make it easier to use. So we'll cover some of those details later on. So let's break this down into three key areas. You know, let's look at some of the tools in customer satisfaction and ease of use. And we'll then drop into some of the modeling tools and the, the, the workflows. So when we look at um, this slide, there's, there's a number of different things. I'm going to show you a number of them. So I'm not missing out words. It's just that they'll follow in the presentation as we go through. Simple things like live updates. Um, it's a little uh, icon that sits in the bottom right hand corner of the interface and it shows you and allows you to click to go and go to the website and find what the latest update is. Um, so today, the latest update today is, as, as of today is Service Pack 2 um, and you'll be able to get that and download that from that site or at least make your administrator or your IT and administrator aware of it. Autodesk Idea Station is a, a forum where we're actually requesting input from customers. So we get a lot of input from customers from face-to-face -face meetings and through the support line and just conversations. But we realize there's a lot of people out there that um, maybe don't use those, those activities and the forum is the best way to actually get opinion um, and groups of ideas. So from within the software you can link to the Autodesk Idea Station and you can go in and enter the requests and enhancements you need. And that's where we're getting a lot of this data um, as to what we've been doing with the products. Um, we go through, we look through them and, and, and pick the ones with them, you know, the most requirements and, and feedback on. Can help, help, the help can be launched with the current tool, so that helps you when you're trying to learn what's new and um, a tool maybe you're not used to using, you can launch the help from the current tool. We've refined the, uh, the picking tools as well, so now we can do a pick chooser between pull lines on uh, two surfaces. So when we've got two boundaries touching together, there were two hull lines that we couldn't, we couldn't dif differentiate between. So now we can go in, select them, use the pick chooser to do that. And we can also distinguish between nerves data and Bezier data when we're doing our pick and selection. And we'll talk about the, the nerves and Bezier later on in the, in, in the presentation as well. We've made some refinements to the user interface, so um, you'll find that the flyouts, the windows where the windows pop up, um, have actually been fine-tuned so that now they're instant. A lot of users were feeding back to say um, they were having to wait half a second, which was, was too much. Um, and it sounds funny when you say it like that, but um, when you're a user trying to access a tool, I can understand that. We've also enhanced the preferences. So, the enhancements to preferences, you will see that we've refined the way that we save them. You now have a save, an import, and an export. Those are the only options available. And the save is there to save the preferences with all the options in them. If you shut the software down and you haven't saved your preferences, you will get a warning to say you haven't saved the preferences and it will loop you back to go and save them before you exit. We'd found that there was a number of times within the sessions that we ran with, a, with Alias that preferences would automatically be saved um, and if you're on a network that would mean that it would ping off to the, down to the network at random times when you didn't really know. So now it's a very clear definitive way of saving the preferences. We've also only got that one place. We used to have two places that were a little confusing. So you can import preferences and then you can export preferences. So export is, is really when you're going to move to another machine or use the preferences in a different environment. So let's move on. Um, we're going to talk about productivity and you know we'll tie back to um, some of the, the customer satisfaction ease, and ease of use tools as we talk through this. But 
these different tools really apply to the different people, um, you know, the designers, computer aid surfaces, class A, and the VIS teams, because you all need to do some or all of these. And um, we, we've developed a set of tools for doing arrays, radial and, and path arrays, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Um, barrel and helix surface, so we can, in the revolve tool, if you're looking for it and you haven't found it, they're in the revolve tool as, as a, a revolution tool, tool of revolution. So we'll have a look at the barrel tool. We've also got you know, the option before where we're talking about picking nerves. Well, now we can pick the nerves and convert them to Bezier. So there's a tool to convert nerves geometry into Bezier geometry. And that's important for the, the class A teams where they want to export maybe into other packages and they want to take the data from alias to other, other um, places. Or they're actually part way through the modeling process and they want to make sure all of their geometry is single span. And then we've got some, an object to plane deviation, a new, a new tool for doing that. So let's go and have a look in ALIS and start to have a look through some of these things. So one of the first things that um, we haven't talked about at all is something called workspaces. So up here you now have the workspaces. And the workspaces is a place where you can drag and save options to go into different configurations. So this is my classic view. This is the way I like to work, um, fairly standard. Um, we have a, a working view, and you can see that now I've brought up the shelf, the bookmarks, and the object lister because I need those on screen um, when I'm working and turning layers on and off and moving to different parts of the presentation in this case. And I've got a full screen. Now, you can set any of these to be whatever you would like them to be. So the idea is that they're customized to your, your needs and we have an alias classic view as well. So you can save and retrieve um, these options. So let's go to the working folder. So now um, what one I want to do is just have a look at through the updates to the object lister. So you'll find that there's uh, a, a new little button at the top of the object lister and actually all control windows. If I click it, it will expand that window to maximize all of the information that's in there. So I don't end up with any gray space, basically. So it's just a way of collapsing and expanding, helping you just to, you know, not to drag down here, just automatically fill it to, to the right view. And you'll notice that on the right-hand side, we have a number of additional buttons. And actually, I'm showing my view of things, so let me just turn on some of the others. Basically, this is the information that used to be in the layer stats. The layer stats is still there, um, but we're trying to bring everything into the object lister to make it the sort of one-stop shop for all of these things. So it shows me the layer number, the state, the pick state. It shows me whether the symmetry is on or not. So I can click on here, and I can um, turn symmetry on and off for these objects. So if I just zoom out, there should be a symmetric half somewhere. There you go. And this toggle will toggle between the two for me. And I can just go back to my bookmark where we started. Then we've got the um, playback options and um, the uh, add or remove to the layer bar. So I'm not using the layer bar anymore. I'm using the object lister. But if I just toggle the um, layer bar on, oops, you'll see that I can then choose whether um, these layers appear as part of these um, of the layer bar or not. So I can actually select them. But there's another reason for me opening up this, because there is actually one feature in here that um, you might want to, to be aware of if you don't use the object lister. Just here you can see I'm hovering along the top bar, and I can get a bar that I can drag. So now instead of having to use these arrows at the either end, if I use more layers, and they're there, I have a bar that I can use as well. So, you know, we're, we're progressing all the different workflows that we have um, to make sure we try and keep as many people as happy as possible. So let's turn off these um, filters and let's just look. So we can actually filter, if we're looking at the object view, we can actually filter surfaces, trim surfaces, curves, etc. So we only see um, a selection of, of the actual objects that in view. And we can look by object, by layer, or by all. So we can actually now cascade these to, to see everything that's happening. Again, existing users 
hopefully starting to adopt the object lister. It's been around for a number of releases, um, but it's a very powerful and, and capable tool. You'll also find that the auto fly out options, now you can see they're instant. And I'll have to pause for a second just to let the webinar catch up with that probably. Um, but basically when I tumble in the view, it hides. When I hover back over it, it pops up instantly. It used to be a delay that we'd intentionally added in that um, we've actually taken away now. So let's um, start to look at some of the features um, that we have in, in, the, in the release, some of the bigger features. And you can see here we're looking at um, the speaker grill that we actually want to start to design um, the grill on maybe. And if I zoom in, you can see that we've already got some a design applied to this. So let's turn that off. Oops, wrong one. And let's go and just start with this red um, hexagon. So I've just got a red hexagon that I'm going to use for this to example to show. If I go into transform and then I go array, you'll see that um, I have a number of different settings. I'm just going to zero those back out. And we're going to start to work on this array in the X, Z space. And we're going to build um, an array of these curves. So I say build, and instantly I get um, an array of um, these curves. And I can now go in, and it will dynamically update. And I can then dial in the different variations of the array. So I've now got an array of holes. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And we can start to change and alter maybe the spacing. So let's say 4. And we're obviously going to increase that to have more. Um, we could change to have an offset. Let's m move that one to 4 as well. And then we could stagger these. So we can actually get the patterning um, set up for, for this. We can scale them. So they actually scale in both directions. So you can see here we're starting small and we're, we're growing them outside. And we can even stagger those as well. So you get a, sometimes a slightly random pattern because we're going in two directions. And we can also scale the position. So we're going from here, and the positions will scale with the actual dimensions. So we can get a, a lot of options and a lot of variations um, with this tool. This really allows us to do you know, the arrays of, of speaker design and grills and, and details like that um, very quickly and, and easily. So let's have a look at a couple that we've just we've created. And let's have a look at um, different pattern. Again, very uh, organized you know, pattern, but it's scaling slightly from inner to outer. Here we're looking at um, you know, a very randomized pattern because we're using the array tool and it's, we're going in two directions again. And then we've got the radial array. So there are a number of, of, of tools, and I will just quickly go in and use the radial array on this, and you will be able to see that we can fit those to a circle, and we can scale their position, and we can do a number of options to control um, how they're actually working. So let's grow them radially. So that means that we fill the circle um, with the amount we need. And if I just drag that back, um, let's reduce the number. Let's make that one. We can actually get some um, very varied patterns. Um, and you know we can do a radial array as well as a, a circular array. So here we've just got a, an example of that. Um, a radial array that has been done on um, the speaker grill at the top. So let's move on. Um, realizing time passes very quickly when you're doing these webinars. So um, here we're looking at um, the next thing, which is the path array tool. And here you can see um, we have got a seat where we've actually applied some stitching to it. And we've got the textures applied. And these stitching really represent different stitching stitching um, application, so whether we're doing it on the edge or the mid-span. So let me just um, go in and show you the, um, the method of how we did this. So if I go into the path array, 
first thing I need to choose is my geometry. So I'm going to use this, and you can see there's a build button down here. And I need to have chain select on, and I'm saying orientate to normals. And it will then go to select all the curves that are aligned. And you can see here that I've put stitch in, and actually these stitches are slightly different, both of them. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and do the opposite one. And I'm going to pick the path again. So now um, they're actually overlaying each other, so let's just change that from negative to positive. And you can see that we start to create a cross stitch. Um, you know, something that um, is done a lot at the moment with interiors is you know investigating the stitch, investigating the stitching, and having a look at um, different configurations and, and and layouts. And you can see that um, you know we've done a couple of different um, stitches here. We've got a cross stitch. We've got a, a single stitch, and we've actually applied a texture to that to give the effect of um, the stitch having details. So we can go in and apply that stitching to a freeform curve, an isopalm, or a surface edge, depending on how we want to apply that stitch, um, how we want it to look. So let's move um, quickly on, and let's look at the, the, the barrel tool. So it's in part of the revolve tool. Surface type will say barrel. And you can see here we've got helix as well. And I now can go in and choose you know, the, um, the path. So we're trying to put the barrel glass in here, basically. And I'm going to choose the path. And then I'm going to choose oops, do that the right way around. So I then get the glass barrel um, with its axis. And the arrows allow me to increase and overextend this barrel. But this means that we can put the barrel in very quickly when maybe we haven't got the barrel or we haven't worked it out, the engineering teams haven't supplied it. Um, but we can then use it to you know, develop the, the, the surfaces and the model further. Nice, powerful tool, um, but very easy and quick to use. So let's um, look at um, one other tool in this sort of area. And I'm going to look at how I created this surface here. So it's kind of a, a piping kind of surface. I'm going to use a, a tool that you know you might not um, expect us to use for this kind of thing, but we're going to use Profile. And if I just move through this and just have a look at um, something I've got set up, because what I've got here is a sliver a surface, and usually you know. I design and put in the profile I want, which is a curve in this case. And usually what I'd have to do is I'd have to create a construction plane, every of these red dots. So that's the, the plane that I've recopied around and then I've reapplied on a construction plane to make sure it's plane to the surface. But some of the advancements to the profile tool mean that I don't have to do that anymore. I can pick the curve and accept it and then say done because the profile tool will now allow me to pick multiple um, curves in the, um, the profile and then I can pick the edge and then I can say build and instantly you find it builds a surface but at the top here you can see that the surface is dipping back and forward and as it goes round so some of the advancements and, and new things in the profile are that I can shift pick put in a profile and then I can decide where I want that profile to be, update the surface, and instead of doing all these profiles by hand, I can very quickly go put them in. So I'm using it for a slightly, um, not abnormal, but um, different way of working. Um, this would usually be for seals, bright work, and that kind of thing. And I'm using it really for a, a concept visualization sort of workflow. As I say, these. A lot of these tools have a lot of, of multiple uses. And I can go through this and very quickly um, put in the profiles where I want them to be. And I'm, I'm updating it each time. I probably would just go through and do all of them. I'll do one more. And you can see here it's actually 
twisted over so I can correct that and we'll stop there but you can see very quickly I can now use this for doing lots of jobs um, it's billowing out because I need an additional profile in here that um, I'll just go and do because uh, it doesn't look so nice and then one at the end so now we've created that profile and this is, is one use of, of the tool. I'm using it in a, a viz concept way that people might not usually think of, do, think of doing. And that's principally how I created this profile um, and the stitching. So now we can do a lot of investigation, a lot of design work, test and try things out um, before we, work, we carry on. So something I meant really to do right at the beginning was to talk about um, some of the things we've done with management of data. So I want to go open my next file from the Vault. So let me just look at the Vault first. So the Vault is a Autodesk data management tool. And with the release of 2014, we added the capability in Windows 7 and Windows 8 to have an automatic preview. As long as you've got Alias installed, you'll get this automatic preview without need for the icons. So I'm just going to go and open one of these files now from within Alias because, um, because what I want to do is I want to show you how that works um, in, in Alias. So let's open this file and what it allows me to do because it's a data management system, I can use it read-only or I can check it out. So let's open read-only. I'm going to delete the data that's here. And the vault is really about managing our data and it means that we actually have the add-in directly within Alias um, to be able to use it. So I can check in, check out data if I so wish, um, use it with Vault, and um, it has a lot of other uses as well, but we can only really just touch the surface today. And we're actually now at the next model, so let me just quickly flick back to Vault for a second, because you'll notice here that all of my presentations for Car Design News are also in there, and in PowerPoint, we also have the, the check-in, check-out capability, as well as all the other Microsoft products. I can look at um, different things and images that go with this, and I'm actually storing all of my what's new data in here um, because I actually, I'm actually i very bad at data management. But you can see here that if I show all the versions on one of the files, so let me just find one of the files I've been working with. Um, let's have a look at this one. Of course, I'm picking one that hasn't got versions, but here you can see all the different things that I've done um, yesterday and today, just refining this presentation with adding things to the presentation and details, and it's all captured. And if I go to a different file, we can also get a preview of that. So in here, I can now preview the file within the data management solution um, in 3D. So it's not just a thumbnail anymore. So back to Alias. So the next set of tools um, that we've, we've, we've enhanced um, are a number of tools again around everybody's workflow and you can see there's a big list of, of list of things that we've enhanced. Profile, Align, Transform CV and I'm going to take you through a few of them um, just now um, but you can see there's a, a very long list of things that we've done um, to improve the workflows for customers. So the first thing here is layer shading. So I'm in the shader, normal multicolor diagnostic shader, and I want to actually mix the two. So I want to be able to look at um, not only the diagnostic shading, but also the horizontal and vertical um, view of this. Oh, sorry. I was in the uh, file view for, for this, that's why. So now I can see the horizontal and vertical. Let's just go back to non. So you can see there we've got the shaders and shadows of this. Let's look at the chrome shader and let's put on the horizontal and vertical stripes again. So now we're mixing two diagnostics. We can see the horizontal and vertical um, controls and we can also see the diagnostic shading below. And I can change the transparency of those two, the mix of those two, to see one more than the other. That really gives me some great powerful tools for um, looking at things. 
So if I now pick some of these surfaces, another tool that we've added is, I've picked four surfaces here, and another tool we've added is the ability to change multiple surfaces and multiple curves degree. So we can do surfaces or curves. So here these are quite high degree. I'm going to change them to four by three, and you can see that all of those surfaces are updating and changing. Obviously I'm breaking the continuity along some of them, um, but I'm not going to accept that and move on. So let's open from the vault the, the next example, um, one more example, and then we'll move on to the next stage. Oh. Uh, even with data management, you've got to concentrate on the names. So we're looking at, can look at the hood here and just look at um, the history of this hood on this hood. So we've got a, a bonnet a hood, you know, depending where you come from. Um, so if I pick these surfaces, I just want to instigate um, the sections which they're on, and I just want to change the curvature values and increase the scale. So here you can see that we've got the, the curvature showing us how these drop off. So we have got curvature, but it's not um, the highest of curvature. So in 2014, what we've added is G3 capability to align. I can bring a line back, I can go in and use the history and change the degree 3 and you can see that the cone plots now run a lot more smoothly because we're using an extra row in that calculation. Um, one of the additional features and enhancements. If I now wanted to change this, I'm going to use the Transform TV tool. Let's just go to the move. So now the Transform TV tool, the actual option box and details um, in here, we actually I've added all of the capabilities from the control panel to the hotspot. So I'm pressing the space bar when in transform CV. I'm going to have one, a look at one feature, but all the lock, the mouse sensitivity, the step size uh, are all in here. And actually we've added in some step size values um, that we can customize our, ourselves as well that um, we can use. So I'm going to go in and look at proportional modification because we've made some changes to that as well. So I'm going to modify this surface and I'm going to take those two rows and I'm going to take a whole extra CV and a whole row. So if I now right click and move, I can move the whole of that um, surface and it's proportional. Okay, So it's a proportional modification. I move this one, it, it um, moves this half and so on. But what we couldn't do before was I can move that and then I can start to play with the fall off. So I can actually see um, how I want this to, to, to be used. So let's leave this one here, and I can then just play with one direction. So now we weren't able to play with the fall off, and that's great because now I can really assess and try different things out and not commit to them. We can undo that. That's great. It means that I can really be productive in my modeling and, and concept development. So let's move on um, to the next part um, of this. You know, we've talked about a lot of different things, and unfortunately, time doesn't allow. But you really can go in, and one of the silly little things that makes a lot of difference is that if you go to the help, the What's New Help, there is actually a PDF document that you can um, save out from the help online. Uh, I know it was something that people were requesting a lot, a lot about. So one of the things that we have changed in, in the math side of it in surface fillet and it is the form factor. So now the form factor is based on a ratio. And we can have a form factor from 0.1 to 2. So here you see an example of what actually will happen with a value of a uh, form factor of 0.1, which has a value, um, sorry, a form factor of point, sorry, mixing the two. Um, the different form factors, one, 0.1 to, to 1 to 2. And this is on a degree three. So you can see what's happening with this. Now, what will actually happen with the higher degrees is when you've got more hull lengths, they will be proportional. So you will take the longest and the shortest, and then it will be um, stepped down in between them all. So this degree seven form factor, um, the lengths will change at, if this is one, or if the form factor is, is 0.4, the shortest one will be 0.4. Then the next one will be 0 0.6, 0 0.8 to 1. Okay, and that's how um, the form factor looks. It's worth exploring that a little bit more um, in the software. 
So then we're on to workflows. I want to give you some time for, for Q&A. Um, some of the key workflows that people use um, is the export um, to Illustrator and maybe one-click workflows to showcase that we now have. So let's have a look at the, the showcase workflow first. Again, I'm just going to load um, a data set. And we're going to use this data set to push it over into Showcase. So let's go to the first bookmark which we are at and let's close the object list and go in and just have a look at Send to Showcase. So this is one of our one click workflows to help us move data from one product to another but with the best associativity and so on. We can choose conversion settings. You know whether we get the ambient occlusion, so we can now take the ambient occlusion we calculated in alias over to showcase. It means we don't have to repeatedly um, recompute. We like the look and feel, we can keep the look and feel. We can replace the materials. So what that that will do is replace the alias materials from the library with the materials in showcase library um, that have been mapped together. Or we can choose our own script. We can choose the style, convert the bookmarks to shots, and we can choose what environment we're going to load them into. So I'm going to take all of this geometry and say go. It stores the data and then it will be loading it into to showcase. So we'll leave that. It's going to take a minute or two just to transport this data over. We'll come back to it in a second. So the other thing that we then have is um, export to Illustrator. Now this has been updated so now we can select active and all geometry, select the sizes, and then we can actually choose the fitting of the curves for the export. So now all this information will be taken. The geometry, if I was to turn this onto wireframe, turn the shading off, and we can now export you know, a view uh, of things. Unfortunately, I don't have Illustrator on my machine, so I can't actually show the import, but these options in Illustrator will really take things across really nicely. Um, and enable you to have that workflow where you're working on in, in Illustrator um, and, in, in a, and in Alias. So let's see how Showcase is doing. Well, it's um, in that very short space of time, it's brought that data across and we can have a quick look maybe at the bookmarks. They're all named the same bookmark as we had um, in Alias, bookmark one, and all the options that are saved in that case are actually brought across. So you can see the correlation where we've got the colors, materials, um, the bookmarks, and we're starting to get lots of things brought across, and the ambient occlusion, which is, again, very important because we don't need to recalculate it. So, really want to just wrap this up and allow some time for questions, but these are a list of things that we've done um, within the software. This is the what we call it just do-it requests, some large, very large ones, some you know multiple um, elements in some tools, but these are the list of some of the things we've done um, with the software in 2014. And hopefully if you start putting things on the idea station, they'll start to appear in here. The more votes and more people go for it, the more we'll be able to decide what people want. So just to summarize, and uh, then I'll allow you to get Q&A. You know, we looked at the integration with Vault, which has been around since 2013 and um, just never really shown it properly, I don't think. Workspaces, object list enhancements really help you to organize your data. The array tools will help you to um, try things out, do different things, but also you know, modelers will be able to help designers and all those kind of things. Barrel tool, the line in G3, the profile enhancements used for the seat, um, layered diagnostic shading, the transform CV, and then the one-click workflows. There is also a one-click workflow for Maya and the export to Illustrator. So thank you very much for listening. I hope it's um, been informative for you. And um, I'm now going to pass you back to Owen. Hi, Robin. Thanks very much. Uh, absolutely fascinating presentation. I'm sure everybody else would agree with that. Um, just to remind uh, everyone who's, who's listened to this, uh, you've still got time to submit some questions. Um, but we're going to kick off with the first one, um, which is, is the export to Illustrator available in all packages? Um, yes, the export to Illustrator is available in Design, Surface and Automotive. OK, 
Okay, great. And on to the next one. Um, are there any packaging changes to the products? In packaging wise, we've we've kind of um, narrowed it down so that design, service, and automotive have a very direct, specific workflow. So packaging changes wise, there's no tool movement around of from pack one package to another. Um, but we have there will be some things that won't be in design um, as opposed to surface and automotive. And the main things that spring to mind are G3, the barrel and helix tools are only going to be in surface and automotive. There probably are a few other things that I just don't think off the top of my head. Um, also, uh, somebody's asking, how can I get hold of Vault? And does the in integration come with Alias or Vault? Um, the integration is part of Alias, so if you have Vault, it will appear. So if you install Vault, the integration sits there and it, it resides there, and you can you can basically straight away use it. Um, if you need Vault, then just speak to an Autodesk representative or a, a partner, and they'll be able to help you out with that. So that integration, basically, as soon as you've got Vault, it's there and it installs on um, on startup basically. Uh, okay, uh, another question we've got is, uh, it's a question really about workflow with uh, VRED and whether that's something that's going to be possible or not. Yeah, um, as people probably know, VRED acquisition only happened at the beginning of the year, but there's a lot of work being done on that at the moment, um, and it's really watched this space, but uh, you can open Alias wire files, FPX files directly now. Um, there's, there's no real big deal. Um, VRED will open and uses the same data translators as Showcase and all of our industrial design products, so um, that's the, the direct connect. So it's using a lot of the common technology, but um, yeah, it's, it's watch this space because it's um, something that um, we're actively working on, I think. Uh, and also, when can we expect uh, a direct export to 3ds Max? Um, I don't know. Um, I think it's a, a difficult thing to say when. Um, I think that's one for the, the gentleman or the lady who asked that to put it on the uh, ideas um, station, um, request it, and then we can see how many people vote for it and have a requirement for it. Uh, okay, and this question, uh, what improvements have been made to EDF data V0, I think it says? Um, there have been a number of improvements to EDF, really to improve the, um, the data translation between the two products. So we had a very high accuracy um, of success with the EDF translator, but there were a few things in, in people using it that were found. So it's really more enhancement to make it more robust. I think we had 99 point something success rate from files that were translated, but I think that's even higher now. Um, so it's really more uh, a stability, well not stability, but a, a robustness in, in use of all data formats and so on. Okay, so that sounds like it's something that's gonna kind of follow on. Um, uh, another question, uh, do light properties um, in the materials, can they be exported to showcase? Um, the light properties, so we use HDRI environments in both showcase and alias. So if you're using the same HDRI, um, you can set them up in both products. But because they're using different um, rendering engines, they primarily, it's um, a correlation that you'll need to do. So you can use the same lighting, lights from actual physical or light elements from like directional and spotlights in alias um, won't be taken over to, to showcase. Um, there's not a direct comparison with them at the moment. Okay, thanks. Uh, we're going to actually have to wrap up the Q&A session now, uh, but if there are any of the, uh, new the questions, you, we can uh, definitely pass on Robin's details um, so you can email him. Uh, but thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, if you missed anything or you want to share this with your colleagues, the webinar is actually going to be uploaded, updated, sorry, uploaded to Car Design News in the next few days. Um, you can access this and all the previous webinars under the Processes tab on the CDN homepage. Uh, so thanks again. Thanks to Robin. Uh, please don't forget to join us on the 24th of September for our next webinar with Dasso, uh, which is the uh, online unveiling of the world premiere of the virtual show car blur by Katia Design. Um, so thanks again, um, and all that remains to say is uh, thank you to Robin and goodbye.